for some reason, for some reason, for some reason, again, most of you guys would know more in the chat than me. Crowder is relaunching Louder with Crowder again. So they did that whole big launch before with all them wearing fucking blazers walking down the street, acting as if they're in fucking Reservoir Dogs or something. And now they're doing it again. I don't know why they keep relaunching the thing. I know somebody mentioned before that he does take breaks, I think in like July or September to kind of, you know, think about the content and kind of come back refreshed and shit. But there always seems to be some sort of big announcement, some big thing they're meant to do. And it just turns up to be the same thing they always do on live stream like i am talking about news stuff cultural war stuff it doesn't really change but anyway kind of went to make a big announcement and he also went to thank some people that have helped to kind of relaunch ladder and crowder and he thanked a very familiar face you'll see very very soon let's play the clip so uh before we get to some of the new announcements new shows new divisions that we're creating here and again you can go to ladderwithcrowder.com slash mod club enter in the promo code replatforming you get a fight like hell shirt i want to uh give the microphone over to some people who've played a role here at mug club and growing this place and uh are niggas got a pulpit like he's the fucking president or like he's some fucking baptist preacher like this is fucking bizarre in the highest level of bizarre are now going to be playing a bigger role so first uh this is a man right here with a resume that you rarely find in the i mean quote unquote conservative movement so through the last decades he's had roles in film television he's hosted shows he sold out theaters um but with brian callant let me let me tell you a little bit about what he lost because that's what replatforming is about in the era of the me too witch hunt when people were being false false accused left and right he not only had a top 10 podcast in the sports world uh, he not only was a central character on one of ABC's Hallmark shows, his role was so popular, he was given his own spinoff. That got cancelled. On ABC, in primetime. The funny thing about the accusations, again, maybe Callan didn't do it, right? Maybe he didn't do it. Unfortunately for Callan, there's so much content out there of him talking about, with some level of enthusiasm, about how women enjoy being raped and all this sort of fucking nonsense right all these kind of creepy stories directly coming from other women's mouths like whitney cummins when she shared that story about how brian tried to put the moves on her one day when he picked her up um to take her somewhere in his car she got into the car and when she turned around to put on her seatbelt and look at him he had his dick out right and it was a funny story that they shared but that he, that's something that he did to somebody he didn't really know that well and he went to obviously make a move so imagine if if a guy is talking enthusiastically about women liking being raped or rape play in the bedroom. And then he's also the, the dude that just pulls out his wee wee, unprompted, unprovoked. Then I'm sorry if some people might believe the accounts of some women that have been corroborated by other people. Like it's a, you know, it's a piece that was written in the Los Angeles Times. The journalists have to corroborate some of the storylines and go back to people and say, hey, did this person tell you this thing back in 20, whenever it happened? Cool. So those women had all their accounts, you know, they had their account, their version of the events. My main issue with Brian Cannon is that he never offered an alternative explanation for what happened. He never once said it. He just said, I didn't do it. What they say about me didn't happen, whatever. He didn't explain anything. So it's hard to believe somebody and think it's a lie when they're not trying to explain or fight back against the allegations. They're just essentially saying, I didn't do it. Trust me, bro. I'm sorry, we can't trust anybody. If that, again, I said, if that was me and I didn't do it, like Stephen Crowder's shirt says, I'm going to fight like hell. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to let it be known that I didn't do it. I'm not going to just like accept it, go on a break, whatever it may be, try and, you know, resurrect myself as some sort of right wing liberal grifter and shit. I wouldn't do that. I'm going to fight it like hell. So the fact that he didn't fight makes me believe most likely it was true. That's just my opinion. So that's why he got cancelled, not because he was saying anything controversial. Or he had some crazy ideas about how the world should be structured and shit. No, because he may have raped somebody back in the day. <laughs> so platforming a rapist is like alleged rapist is a bit, it's a bit crazy. Smear campaign later, he lost all of it. The term cancelled doesn't even cover it. But now he's ready to let his freak flag fly. And beyond being in third chair uh, and appearing in sketches, which he's done, he will be launching his weekly show on September 1st, The Brian Callen Show. But Mug Club will also be producing Brian Callen's next stand-up comedy special. More on that. How long is that Brian Callen show going to last, by the way? One thing that you cannot, again, I'm, I'm somebody that's always going to be fair. I'm not going to get on here and just rag for the sake of ragging. Let's be honest. Brian Callen needs Brendan. 
without Brendan Shaw, Brian Callan doesn't have a podcasting career because I've been a fan of the Fighting Kid from the beginning. And I know that Brian had like mixed mental arts, a Brian Callan show, and he never followed through. He did like 10 episodes, 20 episodes, and then kind of fall off. Even the early Fire and the Kid episodes, if you guys remember watching those episodes when they used to be on Fox and shit, Callan would come late. He'd come late to episodes. They, they, he knows when they record. It's the same time all the time. He'd be saying it was, and then Brendan would get pissed off. He would say it was traffic. He would say it was an audition. He would come late to his own podcast. He, he didn't take it seriously for a while, Brian Callan. He thought the podcast was a waste of time. And then when he started to make money, and it was, it was actually making him more money than his actual acting, that's when he started to take it a bit more seriously. But he's never been a serious dude. Even though he was around early, he should really have a podcast, his own, not not to the level of Rogan, but he should be there where he should be able to get on front of a microphone, talk for an hour and make bank because he's been around early enough. He's in the early episodes of Rogan when he was doing it in his house and shit. He's been Rogan's friend for like, you know, more than three decades and stuff, but he just doesn't have the work ethnic as fucking Brendan Shaw would say. So I'm curious to see how long this fucking sh Callan show lasts. Because already when he appeared on Crowder, he didn't do research. Crowder would get annoyed and roll his eyes. You know, like, I don't think this is going to last long. Like, he, he doesn't have a good track record of... But then again, I, I take it back. If they provide him with everything and he just has to turn up, he's fine. If he has to do it on his own, he's fucked up. Like, if he just has to come out into the studio, sit down and talk for an hour, he'll probably do that because he does it already with a fire and a kid. But if he has to rely on himself to make the content, put it out, promote it, it's not going to happen. It isn't, but I'm curious to see. And also the stand-up special too. Let's see what that is going to be like. In a minute, one where he can finally pull no punches, show the world everything that he truly is, again, because of Mug Club. So please, welcome to the team, part-timer to full-timer, Mr. Brian Callum. <laughs> part-time to full-time what does that mean does that mean he has to move to texas then isn't crowd in texas or am i mistaken isn't he in i don't know where he is i don't know if he's i don't know if he's in austin or dallas but i swear he's in texas if he is does that mean callan's gonna move there or is he gonna try and commute back and forth because that would then put into question whether or not firing the kids still gonna continue <laughs> there you go. Oh, thanks, buddy. thank you Thank you, my fellow Americans. This looks like one of those, um, you guys haven't fucking been in, you guys haven't been, you guys are probably, there's not a lot of Christians in my chat, but I grew up in a Christian family and sometimes you'd go to a house and they'd be like starting the small church and they'd be in someone's house and shit. <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like. It'd be like someone's living room and they'll be like, you know, reading the Bible at the front of the room and shit and everyone would be clapping and <laughs> it kind of feels like a weird church. <laughs> what the fuck man all these like middle-aged white people sit in this room thinking they're part of a revolution with these fucking shitty banners behind them you know talking about fucking i don't know um drag queens in fucking libraries ranting against fucking bud light <laughs> they think they're freedom fighters <sighs> thank you steven <laughs> Listen, let's get serious. There are a lot of bad ideas out there that have very real consequences for our democracy. It I'm not going to lie. 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 I fucking hate when Brian does that over enunciating thing to try and sound like he's choosing his words carefully and considering everything that comes out of his mouth in order to express what he actually means and means what he actually says in some sort of weird pseudo intellectual way i fucking hate it it kind of not so again no offense it kind of looks like he's deaf you know when deaf people try and like speak and they have to kind of like you know like sound every word out that's what he kind of looks like when he's talking why does he do that for it's so annoying it's a tiny thing but it fucking pisses me off. Look, look at his mouth. Look how much it moves. Watch. Americans, thank you, Stephen. Listen, let's get serious. There are a lot of bad ideas out there that have very real consequences. I did not rape that woman. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck is this? For our democracy, it is no longer safe to speak the truth. It is no longer safe to even question. It's no longer safe to rape. <laughs> That's what he wants to really say. It's no longer safe to rape in peace.
women have a predisposition to rape it's in our dna i read this book by sebastian junger a, so <laughs> a sociologist He's gonna start doing all those fucking stupid stuff like just rabbiting shit that he heard from fucking Jordan Peterson. Oh yeah, yeah. He kind of reminds me of, like, again, like he's like he's kind of the, he's kind of the personification of that meme of LeBron James, where he doesn't read a full book; he just reads the first three pages, but then holds it to look like he's an intellectual person. He kind of reminds me of that kind of thing, you know. Without doing the actual work, without doing the actual necessary reading or studying, he doesn't actually read the books. Actually, what happened to the Bookless Book Club, by the way? Hmm. The edicts handed down from the establishment kings, the gatekeepers today will crush you financially. They will censor you. They will deplatform you. They will label you. It's funny he says crush financially. So to keep pausing it, because one of the reasons why I think this is an interesting experiment or interesting is to analyze him and Chris Alia. I think him and Chris got away with it, but in a good way because they have money, right? Like Brian comes from money. His dad's incredibly successful was one of the main people, I think it was like Citibank, was one of the main people behind setting up Citibank in the Middle East, did loads of work, allegedly maybe for the CIA, you know, in being the middleman between the states and countries of the, the Middle East, like Afghanistan and all that shit, right? So he comes from money, like he's he's got money. And I'm pretty sure, my theory again, one of my theories I said out there that I think Brendan might have named one of his kids Boston after fucking Rogan because Rogan's from fucking Boston or he's known to be from there. My other theory is that I think Brian, I think Brian, <laughs> weird to say this, right? I think Brian gets a fucking, um, what's that thing called? He gets an allowance or has a trust fund. I think now, even now in his mid fifties, I think his parents give him money because there's no other reason why somebody who has to pay $20,000 in alimony is able to afford his life just by podcasting on a fire and a kid, which is kind of failing and having a, you know, an okay stand-up career where he's not doing theatres and stuff, he's just playing at clubs. Any other person that does that would have to kind of sell a house, sell a car, you know, maybe get a part-time job. The fact that he can still look after his other family where he divorced his wife and pay $20, $20,000 in fucking alimony per month and look after this new family with his wife and this new baby, all from podcasting, I have a feeling the difference is made up by daddy. Daddy gives him a little bit of money at the end of the month. So that's probably the why he's able to survive that kind of level of cancellation. I don't think any other regular person could survive it. Same with Chris D'Elia. You know, if you don't come from money, you can't survive those type of cancellations. So it's funny that he would say about financial because it's like, dude, you're only still here because your dad worked incredibly hard at his job and smashed it and killed it so that you could be afforded an opportunity to fuck up and bounce back. Because someone that looks like me, if I get accused of the R word, it's finished <laughs> it's over <laughs> no, i mean it's over i have to be on fuck I, I have to go to rumble if i get accused of the r word i would have to go to rumble and start talking about fucking you know egyptians and aliens and we were kings and shit i'd have to do all that sort of stuff to get back up on flag you know what i mean you they will vilify you the rules grow more specific weirder and more plentiful by the day and as i speak You'll even be punished if you stand with traditional beliefs and values. Well, welcome to the pushback. I like your look, I like your look over here. See that? Yeah. See that? A lot of people over here. You can't see them. Oh, he's reading from a teleprompter, isn't it, right? He's reading for, and he's meant to be a professional stand-up comedian. What is he reading from a teleprompter for? These niggas think they're on fucking HBO. They think they're on fucking, I don't know, CNBC or something, right? CNBC or whatever that thing is. Shit. You should see that. How you guys doing in the nosebleeds? <laughs> they can't hear me. All right. <laughs> Steven and the Louder with Crowder family. That nosebleed joke is like fucking Brendan's eight inches thing, isn't it? So, all right, mate. Fuck. How many times do you think Brent, Brian Callen said that line? How you guys doing in the nosebleeds? There's no one here. Oh, God, come on, bro. They have been battling it out on their own for a long time now. Well, I am excited to be part of an ever-expanding group of misfits and comics that have had enough and want to join the fight. The pushback isn't just about fighting bad ideas with better ideas. It's not just about shouting into a microphone. We're here to change hearts and minds, and we are going to do it the way Stephen has always done it, with humor, satire, wit, and maybe a little screaming into the microphone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little screaming, a little bit, yeah. A little anger once in a while yeah. goes a long way. 
We are going to entertain you so hard and so often that you can't help but hear and see the truth. You can't help it. There is no one in the conservative space pushing back on the left's terrible ideas with Stephen's level of funny. No one's even in the same area code. So when Stephen asked me to join the family, I was like, where do I sign up? This is must see pushback. We are an army of funny people with a point of view, funny with a philosophy. We are not your grandpa's <laughs> conservative show. We ain't the strict so chaperone standing in the corner up, telling everyone not to cunt. dance. Fuck the party off. is here. This is where you get to laugh, learn, and be heard. And I am excited to be part of it all. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Marty Moose. Callum was 100% liberal before he got cancelled. What? I don't... It's like a it's like a it's like a standard path they all go down. You get cancelled, all of a sudden you start leaning into the right wing grift because they're the only ones that will have you. They're the only ones that would quote unquote platform you. When really you should just be fighting for your own platform to to be, you know, why don't you just kind of double down on your actual beliefs and kind of use maybe your political leanings as a platform to maybe explain, you know, your situation and to maybe fight back. Why do you have to immediately put that to one side and say no i'll pick up this new flag now i'm I'm gonna wave this red flag around it's fucking cringe man it's really really odd but hey he's gonna try he's gonna try and do a thing like i said before he's you know mid 50s guy approaching his 60s he's got two families to look after bills need to be paid it is what it is i guess isn't it and one thing about hollywood people actors and stuff they just go on to the next gig they are fucking chameleons they have no real principles no real morals no real backbone Wherever the money is, wherever the check is, they'll go. Wherever the cameras are on, they'll go. If there's a microphone there, they'll speak. They'll pontificate. They'll, they'll fucking share their opinion. If they don't know what they're talking about, they'll try and sound like they do. So, you know, he has to do what he has to do to keep his lights on and to kind of keep the family going. So I guess that's what he's going to do. But for me, cringe in the infinite. Cringe in the infinite. What are you guys saying in the chat? John Doe saying to push back into whatever he's got, the weather whatever guy he's let's bend him over in the hopes he could hang around and get him another exactly pushback yeah pushback is kind of gross isn't it because if you think about it in a non-hetero way a pushback is like you know you kind of arching the back and pushing the thing back you know i know i'm doing the motion and people are going to be pausing but a pushback is kind of that isn't it? that's the pushback that's the <laughs> that's the pushback <laughs> Wine girl, wine girl, wine like a gypsy. Wine girl. <laughs> Imagine that's what they be doing, daggering each other in the fucking crowd, ladder and kind of offices. Buy my pull up, buy my pull up. It's like, oh my. <laughs> Ride like a bicycle. <laughs> Sorry, I've got I've got carnival in my mind. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, let's move on from that one before I make myself vomit. Let's continue. Um, what are you guys saying here? Grifting right wing is all that's left. Exactly, Marty Moose. Yeah, is that uh, what? Is that true, Marty Moose? Crowd of fire, Jim Brewer. Oh my god, and Jim Brewer's pretty extreme. So if crowd of fired him, imagine <laughs> what he gets up to. But Jim Brewer also is like he shouldn't be working for a crowd. He should be doing his own thing. He should like a, he should be untethered. I mean, he shouldn't be held down by that those type of platforms. He's fucking wild, um, railing like Mussolini from the balcony. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, but yeah, I bet his form is good and everything. Exactly, Uche. Uche knows about that form. Fucking hell, mate. Jesus Christ. Imagine the shit that must go on at a loud overcrowded staff party. They must get loose. I want to know what drugs they're talking about, though. I really want to know. Maybe I have to read the other article. Maybe I'll do it next stream. I want to know what drugs they're doing. Well, what do you think drugs are doing in the loud overcrowded offices? Do you think it's MDMA? Do you think it's care? Is it coke? Is it pills? I, I, it's not weed. What do you reckon it was? Probably speed, right? But but you spirit, probably poppers, <laughs> poppers for sure. I want to know what drugs they're doing in the fucking ladder crowd staff room. Like what are they getting up to? <laughs> I can imagine fucking Crowder being the worst type of person to get high with, super controlling, wanting to measure everything out. You know what I mean? 
wanting to talk your fucking ear off or you guys the puppets for sure <laughs> probably whatever the wives are on stealing their prescription oh yeah true i keep forgetting you guys in america you guys got good good prescription drugs so it could be percocets could be xanax all those things what's the other thing that what's the thing that bert likes to take is it valium what's the thing that bert likes it's not yeah, xanax something else Bert likes a pill it's not xanax it's something else diazepam is it no uh diazepam is, is is xanax isn't it just another name for it, right? If you guys know in the chat. Diazepam is just Xanax, I'm pretty sure. I forgot, there's some other pill that Bert always talks about. I forgot the name of it. Maybe it's Valium, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is Valium. Maybe it's Valium. Maybe you're right, maybe it's Valium. Yeah, I think it's Valium. I wonder if they start. Maybe they do Valium also. I could, I could see that. Because you guys have good pills. We don't, yeah, that's it. Vi Vi Vicodin, yeah. Maybe it's Vicodin also. One of them. One of the Vs. One of the Vs. Anyway, let's move on. Look at, look at all you guys in the chat with your drug talk. See? I knew it's projection. You guys are always projecting onto me like I'm doing all the fucking drugs, like I'm fucking Pablo Escobar out here, right? Like I'm fucking El Chapo, when really all of you guys know all the fucking names. Look at all the names here. Xanax, Valium, Bicodin, um, Xanax, Benzodiazepines, whatever that one is, Chloropin. All of you guys know all the names. Ozempic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not Ozempic. Look at you guys projecting onto me. I know you. I, I see you guys. I see you guys. I see you motherfuckers.